The Goodreads app will be the death of me, I swear. Hey guys, it's Kara, and today I'm keeping this video short. I plan to talk about 12 books that I am not going to put off any longer. The 12 books that are for sure going to be on my 2020 TBR. I think that what I've just said is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll go ahead and quickly break it down for you. Basically, these are not going to be new 2020 releases. These are all books that I've wanted to read ranging between for as long as I can remember to yesterday. So it's it's kind of a mess, but I'm excited to talk about them all with you. And I don't see why we shouldn't just get right into it. I'm moving to this side, so I can put my list up here. I obviously don't have all the books yet, so that's where they'll be. Starting with The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I feel like I'm quite possibly the only hardcore mystery and thriller fan that has not read this book. It's about an unlikely duo who teams up to investigate a missing persons report that's approximately 40 years old. That's really all I know about the basic plot, but I know there are other subplots dealing with corruption and family drama and a lot of other interesting details that I know I would like. So yeah, The Girl with a Dragon Tattoo by Stieg Larsson, I'm coming for you. Next is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. I mentioned in my last video, my bookshelf tour, that this is an author I'm really interested in getting into. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and put it out there early in the video that there's a lot of historical fiction on this list. I don't read a lot of historical fiction, it kind of intimidates me, but when I do read historical fiction, I tend to love it. And I feel like The Nightingale is something that is a potential five-star read for me. I think it's a very important story. It's about Nazi-occupied France during World War II, and it deals with the relationship between these two sisters and the problems they face in their lives respectively, and then possibly together. I know that one, it says in the description on Goodreads, one joins the resistance, so... I'm really interested in that type of storyline. I think it's gonna be an emotional read for me and for whatever reason, I've just put it off and no more. 2020 is gonna be the year that I get it done. Next, I'm going for The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I have a few different motives for wanting to read this. The first thing is that I'm not really a big fan of dystopian and utopian set novels. It just doesn't really appeal to me unless it's very well done. So I kind of want to read this because I think that might be able to redeem that genre for me. We'll see. Secondly, I know that it was kind of controversial that The Testaments won the 2019 Goodreads Choice Award for Best Fiction. You know what I'm talking about if you're watching this video, probably. And I'm obviously not gonna read that before I read The Handmaid's Tale, so it's now or never. No, it's not. It's not now or never. That was dramatic, but it feels like now or never, so let me have this. The next one I am by far the most intimidated by. It's 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami. I can't believe I'm saying this. It's upwards of 1,100 pages, and I don't even think that anyone knows for sure what this book is about. But I, someone who has not read the book, am about to try to give it my best shot. A young woman in Tokyo begins to realize that she does not recognize the world around her as her current surroundings. Basically, she thinks she's entered a parallel universe and Obviously, I've not read it. I don't know if she does or not, but since the world that she was in was in the year 1984, she begins to call this new world she's in 1Q84, and Q stands for question because she doesn't know what part of time that she's in. And there's also a subplot with an aspiring writer whose life is falling apart, and of course, these two characters' paths cross. I think I'm really gonna enjoy it, but at the end of the day, who's to say? Next is The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. This is the same author as The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, which I did love and it broke my heart when I read it for the first time in middle school. The Heart's Invisible Furies is another long one. It chronicles one ordinary man's life from basically the time that he's born until he's 70 years old. and just shows how the world around him changes over time, how he grows as a person, um, how his community changes and his perspective on his life changes. I have heard from other people through talking to people who have read this book that once they do pick it up, they've not been able to put it down and that it was very readable and enjoyable. There were funny moments and there is light to the darkness. So that gives me hope and I might get to this one in January. We will see. 
Next is The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini. So this is one that even my non-book loving friends have read and enjoyed. I know I was just talking about The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, but the friendship dynamics explained in the outline of this book remind me a lot of that story. So The Kite Runner takes place in Afghanistan and is about two boys who are raised in the same household but have two different upbringings. The book deals with themes of betrayal and redemption and I'm just such a sucker for not just stories about friendships, but I'm really interested in male friendships in general. And this seems like it's going to be really touching and enjoyable, possibly heartbreaking. And I'm just feeling like 2020 is going to be the year of historical fiction for me. I can't believe I've made it 23 years without reading this book, even though it was published 15 years ago. So I don't know how I've been 15 years without reading this book. Moving on. So this next one is the only book on my list that I've started and DNF'd. And it's The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. Let me start by saying, I did read the first 20 pages of this book in the summer and I really enjoyed it. I love the writing, I think it's beautiful. I just was not in the right place to be reading something that dense. The Goldfinch is about a boy who survives a terrible accident that killed his mother. So obviously Theo, who's the the boy is devastated by the loss of his mother and his life takes a turn that it probably wouldn't have otherwise taken if this accident had not happened. It's all about fate and loss and finding your identity and I'm down if I can get into it. Next is another piece of historical fiction. It's The Book Thief by Mark Zusak and I, I it's another one. How have I made it this far without reading this book? So for this one, we're back in World War II, Nazi Germany, and a girl is stealing books from book burnings. And then the action and the suspense of this story is heightened when this young girl's foster family decides to hide a Jewish person in their basement. This is one that I'm not just trying to check off my list. I think that I will enjoy it. I think that it's a very important book. And then I feel like this heavy weight will be lifted off my shoulders and I will be enlightened because I will have finally read The Book Thief. Okay, let's lighten things up a little bit. I want to read Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. I don't know anything about this book other than it is Tina Fey's memoir. So I can use this time to talk about how much I loved Yes Please by Amy Poehler and then Mindy Kaling's two memoirs, Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me and Why Not Me. Here lately I have only been reading memoirs if it was written by a woman of comedy, so Tina Fey, you're next. Okay, going darker now, Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. It's about a family who moves to a new house and then finds out that there is a pet burial space right near their house and then something happens to their cat. Maybe I should take this one off. No, I'm leaving it. Next is one that I really wanted to read this winter and I just don't see it happening, but it's The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. The release of The Starless Sea, which is not necessarily tied to The Night Circus in any way other than it sharing an author, did kind of prompt me to try to get a move on with reading The Night Circus. This traveling circus that only pops up in the nighttime and two different magicians, apprentices, have to duel each other. But guess what? Those two apprentices fall in love and then there are problems because, let's see why there are problems, because they're still gonna have to duel. You'd think I could have seen that coming without having to reference Goodreads, but I'm on my last four brain cells. Last but not least is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. So this is about a young woman who falls in love only to find out that this man's former and dead wife haunts them. Okay, when I say haunt, I don't mean like, ooh, I'm a ghost. It's more like her presence is there and it's making things tough. But going back to the ghost thing, there might possibly be ghosts, I don't know. I know it's a masterpiece. I think it's gonna be chilling. And quite frankly, I don't know why I've not picked it up yet. So yeah, to wrap it up, I'm planning to read at least one of those each month of 2020. So that way I think that that makes everything manageable. And then for the rest of my TBR, I can focus on new releases or more recent releases, or I can just be the mood reader that I am and pick whatever I want as I want to. To keep an eye out for my upcoming 2020 reading resolutions video. I hope to have it up as soon as possible and thank you so much for watching. Bye!